If you go to chat.openai.com, type a question and press enter, you will get a text response back. You can ask a second question, but this time it will remember what you asked it previously. And based on that, you will get the response back. Let's ask it a third unrelated question. And you will get the response as text back as well. You can start a new chat, but the chat from the previous session is stored on the right side of the screen. You also get the option to jump back to a previous chat in the history. This demonstrates how the functionality of OpenAI is exposed as a chatbot. This presentation will talk about how chatbots differ from typical applications. However, both are developed using Azure OpenAI in the background. OpenAI includes a number of technologies, but chatbots and ChatGPT are foremost that are most commonly known. Key takeaways from this session include differentiating between chatbots and typical applications and sparingly describing how Azure OpenAI can be used for developing and deploying a chatbot. A typical web application front end calls data and logic in the back end. In reality, the back end comprises of databases, logic, and internal or external APIs. Speaking of APIs, OpenAI is just an API and Azure OpenAI is the Azure version of the OpenAI API and is just like Azure Cognitive Services. OpenAI has its own app store which is used to develop solutions for the regular OpenAI. However, Azure OpenAI requires development using the Azure platform. Just as any application calls a sample API in the back end, so too it can call Azure Cognitive Services and Azure OpenAI API. In these cases, the application may be termed as an intelligent application. Note that to call the Azure OpenAI API, the application will submit the request in natural language and the response is in natural language as well. Let's look at a demo of OpenAI Chat GPT Plus, which requires a monthly paid subscription. I ask the application a question and receive a response back as text. The second question, however, asks for an image in response. Chat GPT Plus generates an image and provides the image as response in the web browser. Keep in mind that generating an image is not possible without a subscription. You also have the option to specify which model needs to be used for responding. In addition, with the paid subscription you also get access to several GPTs created by different individuals using the application store. For creating a chatbot, you can develop a custom application in Visual Studio that calls the Azure OpenAI API. The second option is to create a co-pilot. Regardless of how it is developed, the chatbot will use the Azure OpenAI API. The Azure OpenAI API in turn calls a GPT model that was trained using a large body of natural language text content. You also have the option to augment this with your own custom text content to train the machine learning model. In the specific case where you used your own custom content, it is called Retrieval Augmented Generation, or RAG. The other option is to create a custom model from scratch. However, creating a custom model is very expensive and not recommended. Copilot offers a no-code solution for developing chatbots. Already, there are a lot of chatbots for different products available. All of these chatbots or co-pilots created by Microsoft are associated with a different product and made available to the users of that product. We already described how Azure OpenAI sits behind any chatbot you create. Chatbots can either be created using Azure AI Studio or in Copilot Studio. We would take a look at Azure Copilot Studio first, accessible at copilotstudio.microsoft.com. The chatbots you see in the Microsoft world are developed using Copilot Studio. Even a TV commercial for Microsoft featured Copilot. The commercial premiered during the Super Bowl 2024. Developing a Copilot is very straightforward and involves some simple steps. You start by creating a Copilot using Copilot Studio. Then you specify a data source. You can modify the workflow of the chatbot visually without writing any code. And as a last step, you publish the chatbot to a channel. This session will cover the steps shown in green here. Create a new copilot in the copilot studio and specify a name and then click the create button. The creation process takes a couple of seconds. Once the chatbot is created, click on its name in the list. Click the button titled go to generative AI. On the next screen, you get the option to upload one or more documents. I am going to upload a PDF file for the draft artificial intelligence policy for Pakistan. As long as the uploaded file is within the specified limit, it will finish uploading. Scroll down the page and enable the option titled Boost Conversational Coverage with Generative Answers. Hit the Save button at the top and enter a question to ask the chatbot. 
you will get the answer to the question or prompt as shown, just as an example. I asked the chatbot another question and got a response back, including the citations, which are essentially just links to the original data source. If you click on the question, you can view a visual of the chatbot workflow. Before I show you how to publish the chatbot, let me begin by showing you the different channels that you can deploy the chatbot to. To publish a chatbot, go to the Publish page by clicking Publish on the left navigation menu, and then click the Publish button at the top. You will get a dialog box to confirm that you want to publish. After you click Publish, it will take a few seconds for the copilot to be published. You will receive a success message. In my case, I publish the copilot to a demo website. I can click the link and see the chatbot in a custom web application. That's it. I can ask a question and get a response back as text. Just like any typical web application you create that interacts with a backend, the application can talk to the Azure OpenAI API. We just saw how you can use Copilot Studio. Let's now look at how you can create and publish a chatbot using Azure AI Studio. Go to the Azure portal at portal.azure.com and click the Azure OpenAI service you created. To go to the actual OpenAI Studio, click the link at the top. On the home page of Azure OpenAI Studio, you can click the button titled Create New Deployment. If you just provision the Azure OpenAI service, there are no deployments created yet. Click the plus icon to create a new deployment. The Add Deploy Model dialog window will open asking you to select a model, a model version, and the name of the deployment. Once you specify those values, click the button titled Create. A new deployment is created and listed under Deployments. You can further click the deployment name to see additional details for the deployment. To view the chatbot in action, click Open in Playground. Be sure to select Tax as the template for the chatbot. You can now ask a question pertaining to tax from your chatbot using natural language. A response to your question is returned and displayed in the web browser. You also have the option to look at the return JSON string using the show JSON option. For further programming, you can specify a language and generate a sample source code to call the Azure Open AI API. As a last step, you have the ability to deploy the chatbot by specifying the name, selecting your subscription, and the Azure resource group. You also have to specify the pricing plan so that you can be billed for the usage. To sum up what was mentioned in the session, you can create chatbot by embedding them in a custom application or by developing a copilot. Both of these options call the Azure OpenAI service in the background. If you develop a custom application, you can write code by using the Azure AI Studio, whereas for a co-pilot, you can use the Copilot Studio, which is a no-code approach. Also, if you use the Copilot Studio, once you have the chatbot or co-pilot ready, you can publish to a channel to surface the chatbot to end users. Channels include a custom application or Microsoft Teams or even Facebook. Thank you for staying till the end of this session. Please like and subscribe. Goodbye.